Moving here. Hey guys, can you help me introduce my friends? This is Fred and Deanne. Can you give it up for them? <clears throat> now, I want to um, I, I want to set this up a little bit. I want to get some faith stirred up in this room. Um, because if you're believing God for a miracle, if you are in faith for a health situation, if you're in faith for a family member, if you're in faith for a child, a friend, yourself, I want you to tune in from this point to, to hear this interview. This is an amazing miracle uh, that God had, had given to you guys, made available for you guys. I mean, Fred, as we sit here today, and as we were even talking yesterday, like, you're a miracle. Um, you know, COVID, he had COVID pneumonia, um, was diagnosed, basically given a, a death sentence. Like, you're not going to make it. Um, and we, we all, in some way, form or fashion, have probably been affected by this pandemic and, um, you know, heard stories like this. And uh, unfortunately, a lot of those stories, you know, those people aren't sitting on a couch, on a stage, telling a testimony. I mean, it's a, you know, it's kind of a grim thing. And so, um, but, you know, we all know the effects of that. Um, you were on uh, a ventilator, life support, basically giving, given hours um, to live. Um, so that whole, um, that whole diagnosis happened. You're at the hospital. Um, Tell us, Deanne, I'm going to talk to you because through all of this, we've just kind of, you've kept me updated a little bit, kept us updated. Um, so what was, what was that like? You know, I mean, he's on a ventilator, you're at UHC. Tell us about some of that news that you got from the doctors. Well, he was at the hospital um, the first time and he was in critical care for a week. And then they said, oh, you're getting better. Um, we're going to move you to regular room. Just a couple days later, they said, you're getting better. We're going to send you home. So I thought, we thought the journey was over. They said, you have no damage to your lungs. Um, every, you're going to be getting better is basically what they said at that point. Um, a week at home, he, every day, it just kept getting worse. And by the end of that time, that our regular doctor said he needs to go straight to the emergency room. Um, that's when they found um, a hole in his lung and he had double, um, they, he had pneumonia everywhere, just, just everywhere. And then he was admitted into the critical care again. Um, I guess, where should I go from there? Yeah, so, so he's admitted <laughs> so there. There's a little bit of the backstory um, there. You, yeah, so, so... So he wasn't so uh, he wasn't on the ventilator until a few days later. Right. But um, I had called you guys. Uh, we had just started going here. Yeah. And we didn't really have a lot of connections. I knew Jordan from an event that we did, so I texted her because I knew there was faith here. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. So... <laughs> You were you were definitely right about that for sure. Yeah. yeah. So like. So that's when you guys came in on, on yeah, Saturday so it, to pray. Yeah. So in September, I remember Jordan um, kind of meeting me and saying here on a Sunday morning, "Hey, there's a couple. You know, she had just called me. He is not doing well. He asked that someone come up and pray with him. And I remember um, we got done with worship and Heath. I don't know where. Right there's Heath. Fred, that's Heath. He he's who came up. Thank you so much. With. He has yeah. never met. Heath and I went up to the hospital and just hooked our faith up there in the hospital. And um, I'm telling you, there was a spirit of faith in that room. We, we walked up not really knowing what to expect, you know. I mean, like you said, I didn't know you guys. Um, and uh, we walked in, and we just, we laid hands on Fred. Um, we hooked our faith up with Deanne and uh, just believed God for a miracle. Yeah, you guys prayed boldly. Yeah, and I remember turning around, the nurse, there was a nurse that had walked in the room, and she was crying in the corner. And I, we told you, and we told you, you're going to be okay. He's going to be okay. Like, we just, we knew it. And walking out of that room, <laughs> it, it sounds silly, but we walked out of that room, and we started walking down the hall of that ICU wing, stretching our hands in every room and declaring healing over that room because there was such a spirit of faith in that hospital. There was such a spirit of faith there you knew, okay, God, this is an opportunity. This is an open door. Um, that was Sunday. 
Yeah, and the Monday. one thing that yeah. one thing that you said uh -huh. was that this is not the end. This is the beginning. Yeah. So it's kept getting looking darker, 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 and you said that, mm -hmm. and I yeah. was able to. It, we were able to hook up with that. Absolutely. So it didn't get better though. That was Sunday. Monday, what did they tell you? In the night, he texted me. He said, <clears throat> they said, um, he doesn't even remember any of this, but he texted me. <laughs> Excuse me. And he said, they're talking about putting me on a ventilator. I need you. I got there at 8 a.m. or whenever the visiting hours started, and they wouldn't let me in. They didn't tell me why. I was... I took that, I felt the intensity of what was going on, and I took that as my cue from God to pray. And in that waiting room area, there was no one there. They didn't really allow anybody to be in there at that point. But with my mask on, I paced, I prayed, I, pr I waited for the Holy Spirit to lead me and guide me in my prayers. Um, so for an hour and a half, um, I did that, and then they finally came and got me, and they said that they were stabilizing him during that time, because he was unstable, and the nurse brought me, and he said, it's actually a miracle that his vitals are as good as they are right now, so his vitals were good. I went in there, um, we got to speak and spend a little more time together. Um, pray, of course, while we have our preaching on, our, <laughs> our worship on. Um, but, you know, hours pass kind of the afternoon. You know, your husband is not doing well, and he needed more oxygen through those hours. And they said um, he needs to go on a ventilator. And I said his sister will, his sister is traveling eight hours to come see him. Um, can you wait one hour? She'll be here one hour. No, we have to do it now. Go ahead and say your say your goodbyes. I want to. I want to. <laughs> this this was amazing. So we were talking the other day, and mm -hmm. you know you had said this, and they informed you he's not going to make it, like he's not going to get better. Say your goodbyes yeah. now. What was your response? Well, at that point they'd said say your goodbyes. I kind of knew that they meant that it could be that way, um, but when I went to talked to him. He knew he needed to go on the ventilator at that point, and I made it a point. We're not going to say goodbye. What I said is, Fred, you love Jesus. I love Jesus, and we trust him, and that's all there is. We just trust him. Yeah. Yeah. You answered it. You know, I think, mm -hmm. I think through this whole, um, just this whole journey, months, mm -hmm. Um, what we saw from you was just answering things in faith. Mm -hmm. Not based upon your current situation, but based upon what you know to be true. Mm -hmm. um, something that really just encouraged me, Fred, um, is, you know, when we were talking the other day, I said, how are, how are your kids doing? And one thing that Deanne said was, um, you know, Cosmos, which is your, your, um, your son, um, Fred and him read the Bible every single night together before, you know, you're placed on a vent and before this had happened. And just the demeanor of your son um, through all of this, maybe you could speak about it, but, you know, Fred, this is kind of, it's, it's highlighting you like what a, an amazing um, way to train up your, your child, to, to build him on the word, like, um, on the other side of this, as you hear about us talking about Cosmos and um, just his demeanor through all of this, like, as your son, what, is that, what does that do to you as a father right now? It's just amazing. Thank you so much. I, before, um, I just want to thank the staff of this church, mm -hmm. um, all the pastors, everybody that prayed for me, um, the, you know, because it was, the, it was the prayers of the saints Pastor, I mean, I had so many churches praying for me. I, I mean, from every, from different places. I, I hear about it all the time. And prayer is so important. And when everyone comes together in faith and they pray, that, um, that releases signs, wonders, and miracles. I mean, 
I know that's true. And um, th this church, and you especially, um, and, and all the pastors, I want to just thank everyone for praying for me and doing that. Oh, about my son. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what we we're going to talk about. No, I just yeah. wanted to say that because Absolutely. It, it's, it, you, it, it's just amazing. Just to be together, to see all the saints today. I haven't been to church um, in a large meeting since, um, since I had the COVID. And it's just amazing, the body of Christ, how everyone can come together. And we're in one, we just have this unity when we join, and it's so important. Absolutely. My son is amazing. His faith is amazing. Um, uh, you just, you know, we teach him about God, you know, and just every day, you know. And then the reading the Bible, we just go through some scriptures at night. That helps, you know, grow his faith. Yeah. Being around a Christian fam you know, the family. And, yeah. well, you know, we, we're not perfect. <laughs> I mean, we, we, you know, we argue and... <laughs> Just like any other family. But, you know, I think it's good. I think it's good that you show your children how God moves through, you yeah. know, through the family. Yeah. And um, we're honest with him. Yeah. And he knew what was going on. And yeah. he, he stood up and he just was so amazing. I got to see him on his birthday. I was, um, this is a story, I, because of COVID, I was in Pittsburgh at the time because they had transferred me. I was, um, they took me to Pittsburgh, but he came up, and um, I didn't think I was going to be able to see him because of all the restrictions with COVID. But they snuck me out, and they took me, <laughs> took me down, and I got to see him, and he was so happy to see yeah. me on his birthday, and it just helped me, encourage me that I could see him, and uh, it was amazing. I hadn't seen my son. I haven't. It was a while, yeah. and I didn't get to see my children. They weren't allowed to see me. Yeah. So it was, yeah, that's, yeah it was, I just think, good. you know, I mean, as a father myself, you know, just the importance of training your children, you know, showing your children, reading scripture with your children, teaching them faith, teaching them that God is a powerful God. It is. It um, is. There is nothing impossible with God. And I think just as he walked through this, yes, you know, yes. he believed what he had heard. Yes. I, I want to say something else. Pastor, I... I was praying about God, you know, what to say up here, because I, I don't know what to <laughs> But I have something to tell you. I have something God sh he spoke to me. I'm sorry. Here's, here's what he said. And I don't know, I, I don't, I, I was praying this or anything, but he said, he told me, and he said that he wants the children of this of your church, and he there's something special that he's gonna. I don't know if you're planning anything. I have no clue, but I I know that God wants to use the young ones, and he's gonna release things through them, yep. signs, wonders, miracles, um, and it it's gonna be through the. Through these children, and I don't know how that's going to happen, when, but I know, I feel in my heart, this, the Holy Spirit spoke this to me, that um, my son and that generation, he's going to use you pastors and leaders to train them and to show them how to work in the spirit and um, have faith for all different things, and they're going to help lead you and direct. I don't know exactly how that's going to work itself through. That's amazing. But that's a word from God. That's that, amazing. Yeah, yeah, that's amazing. Absolutely. So you had mentioned you're transferred to Pittsburgh. Um, and we know things looked grim. Things, you know, were definitely not necessarily getting better. Um, one of the things that you had said is the conversation with the doctor before he transferred you. Um, you, had, you, you know, you had told him, hey, we are believing for a miracle. Um, and because he was telling you, just, you know, get ready for, you know, the imminent, get ready for this. And, and you didn't agree with that, but you said, we're believing for a miracle. What was, what was his response in that moment? Yeah, that, I think that's when he told, to, told us to have anybody who wanted to see him to come see him. 
And um, he said, your husband is very, very sick, and there's really nothing else we can do. And I didn't really have any kind of emotions, and I felt that that was the spirit in me, maybe from my prayers from that morning. He steadied me through that day. And I just told him, we believe in Jesus, and we believe in miracles, and it seemed to kind of change the atmosphere. And he responded back, I believe in miracles too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, yeah. so it's almost then we had the, the doctor's agreement. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, I just think that was amazing. You know, you answered that. And then it res- his response was, oh, yeah, you're a believer. I, I get it. I believe in miracles too. Um, so uh, moving along here, we've, we're, we're running out of time. I just wanted to say, um, you know, in Pittsburgh, you had the idea to take Fred his keyboard. Um, and um, just because, I mean, if you don't know, Fred, um, he teaches music, um, you know, proficient in, in playing piano and things. And so you thought it would be a good idea to take your keyboard. Real quickly, like, tell us about, you know, you taking your keyboard and what that did to the, the nurses and staff and everything there. Well, I, I, he had just woken up. For the first time on a Monday, his sister was there kind of during the week, and I was getting ready to go up there. I'm go- I said, I'm going to put, I'm going to do this. I'm going to put the keyboard in my trunk. I'm going to bring it up to him. And a little bit of me, I'm kind of shy sometimes. I'm not sure if I'm going to do it, but I did it. I brought it up there. Um, he just played music from heaven. It just was peaceful. It was worshipful. The nurses, the doctors loved, you know, I mean, they were so amazed. They encouraged it. Physical therapy loved it. Um, the head nurse ended up coming and um, ended up coming and recording him playing for the whole, like an employee memo board where they all could view it and be encouraged so there was worship that actually went out to all of their workers yeah. that they could see that and they yeah. could see God. <laughs> yes. oh. Yeah. So I know you had said he, as he was playing, you were singing. There was just worship filling the room. They weren't, yeah. they weren't down and out. They weren't releasing a victim mentality. But, hey, we're going to get something in their hands that can change the atmosphere, not only for you guys because your guys' faith was there, mm-hmm. but now – how God used you playing music, you singing yeah. worship, you leading yeah. worship on that floor of that hospital yeah. to influence the doctors and nurses. They met in front of your room because, and they, they had said, you know. Yeah, they'd they, meet in front of my room every morning at 9 o'clock, all the specialists, physicians. And so I had my keyboard, not every day, but um, I, they, they would say, you're going to bring your keyboard out? So I play the music, you know, the, the songs and a little bit of worship while they were doing their reports and things. And they, <laughs> they said, this is great. We wish we had this <laughs> yeah. all the time because it made it, <laughs> yeah. made it, made it, you know, made it good for them. They, they enjoyed me doing that. And, and it, you know, they, they, they weren't necessarily, they weren't believers. I don't know if some of them were, but, yeah. um, I, you know, they just, they felt the spirit of God. I know the presence of God was there. And they can, you know, they <laughs> sensed it. So yeah. Yeah. they'd say, well, I don't know what that is. You know, they'd say, you know, but it's so peaceful. <laughs> yeah, again, amazing. You know? And in that amazing. big Pittsburgh yeah. hospital, that was the, they said that was the first time they've ever had a keyboard in the ICU. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. Right? It's amazing. Just, the, it's just amazing. The, I think Pastor Steve Munns calls them God dots. The, the, the things that God leads you to, where he leads you at. And what you went through, it's just not for you to go through. It, no. it wasn't for you to get, a, you know, just to be able to share this testimony, ultimately for God's glory, but it was connected to other people. Yes. If, you, if you anyone is here that needs a miracle in their bodies, if you need, if you, if you have sick today, if you have um, anything, whether it's a physical issue, a mental issue, um, just maybe you're lonely um, I'm just here to tell you today that God is con- God is doing it, not that He could do it, and that Jesus is. We well, see Him on the cross, but He's He's in front of the cross. He's risen from He's uh, alive, and the Holy Spirit is active, and He can do it. While I'm speaking, 
he'll heal your body right now. Yeah. And if you're listening online and you're on the stream right now, I'm saying to you, just receive the miracle God has for you today. That's my message. Simple as that. He can do it. Amazing. He can do Amazing. it. Amazing. And he will do it. Come on, can we just give God some glory? Can we give God some glory? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Well, listen, thank you so much. Thank you guys so thank much you. for being willing to, to, uh, to share your testimony. You know, it's for your benefit, for our benefit, but ultimately for God's it's, it's glory. It's for God's glory. God's it's glory. Jesus' glory. Amazing. Um, amen. Thank Amazing. you so much. Absolutely. I thank appreciate, you. I appreciate you giving me the opportunity to share this Absolutely. today. Absolutely. Thank and, you. Um, thank amen. You. Awesome. I guess I had a little small message is that whatever situation you're in, I just encourage you to look what the truth is. We know that God's word is the truth, yeah. but we also have the Holy Spirit speaking to us of what that, that real, his reality yeah. in the moment. So there's things that he's saying in the moment. There's also the truth of the Bible. Yeah. So whatever situation is, you might be getting some other other reports, other people saying things, but look for the truth. Mm -hmm. Look at the truth. Yep. The truth of the word trumps the truth of the world. Awesome. Well, hey, we've got more glory stories um, to show you. Just keep your attention on the, uh, the video board, and we'll be right back up. 